Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about, again, the Anytone D168 that uh, BridgeComp sent over. We're going to get into programming today. First things first, I did notice in a Google search somewhere that it said that the software is very specific to the firmware that's in the radio. So if you go into settings and device info, you can pull up that revision. So I did a search for the D168 programming software with the version number and BridgeCom's website comes right up and it looks like they make it really easy to grab the exact number that you need for your programming software. So after you get that downloaded, it'll open up, look something like this. And I like to start with contacts first. So head over to whatever network you're gonna be using in North Carolina, I have got the PRN. And when you go over to ncprn.net and click on repeaters, it will show you your repeater, frequency, color code, time slot, and all the groups on that slot. And then here's time slot two with the main PRN group. So we'll take that information back to the program. So come on over to your contact and talk group tab, and you can go ahead and start filling things in here. You can see we started with the echo test talk group. If I wanna add PRN, I can go ahead and open that second line We'll give it a name and just kind of fill out what we got here, group call. Now this is important right here, your call type. Remember we talked about this. All your talk groups are going to be group calls. So I've gone ahead and built this out with a couple of the different uh, talk groups that I'll see on the networks around me. And we'll go ahead and move on to building the channels. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we are working strictly under digital right now on the DMR side of things. So scrolling up into our main part of the radio, we'll go to our channels here. You can see it's already populated with a couple of them as it comes and we're going to restructure this. All right. So we got a channel set up here. I'm just going to go over quickly what you put in each channel. Of course, up here, we've got your channel name. That's what's going to show on the radio, your receive frequency, transmit frequency. And if you're using DMR, this needs to be changed to digital from analog, uh, radio ID. This will be set up elsewhere in the code plug and we should actually do that first. So we'll do that next. Set your contact by clicking on this button. It'll show you all the contacts that you have programmed into your contact list and then make sure it's on the appropriate slot. So one of the reasons that I usually stay away from radios outside of the Motorola spectrum is building this channel list. I have got quite a few channels in here and typically software like this will not let you copy and paste. And while this doesn't quite let you do that in the software, let me show you something else that you can do that makes this uh, just about as easy. Under tools, you can go to export and actually save your channel list in an Excel file CSV. And while this kind of looks maybe a little intimidating, if you set up your first repeater, so here is my Franklin repeater. I've got this fully set up in the code plug. I can now copy and paste these channels and repeat it. So say I paste it right here to these Silva channels. All I got to do is change my frequencies, transmit, receive, and then all of my talk groups and all the other settings that I've set up are going to stay there. So that made replicating a couple hundred channels uh, for our states here a lot easier. So when you're done modifying that, just go to import and reverse the process. You can click on your, uh, channel here and then dive back into your folder where you've saved it and run it back in. So normally from here I would go to zones, but since I skipped that, we're going to go under digital and click master ID and make sure that your call sign and your DMR ID are put in here. That way your radio will identify properly on the network. Now that that's done, let's check out zones. There it is back under public. So here's all the zones that we've created. And this is as simple as opening the zone that you want and moving those uh, channels back and forth. So I can select them and just kind of move them where I want. This is also something you can edit in the CSV format. It's not as easy to replicate all of that inside of the CSV with your zones because everything I assume has to be case sensitive. So I just made sure in my case to keep all my channels in order alphabetically. That way when I'm building the zones, everything's in alphabetical order. Now, if you want to add a simplex channel to every zone, super easy to export it into that CSV format and you can copy and paste that because the channel name is the same. Again, I'm assuming that it may throw errors if it's not case sensitive. So I did build the zones out uh, in the program. And there is a ton of stuff you can customize in this radio. I know I haven't explored all of it, but once you get this far, you should have most of your basic stuff ready to roll. 
So I'm going to go ahead and write this to the radio. If you had any trouble reading it or have not set it yet, make sure you set your COM port here. I'll bet you figured that out by now, but at that point, we're gonna write our changes into the radio. We'll go ahead and send everything in. It doesn't take too long. This is programming by just a random USB-C cable that I had laying around, which is a feature I love here. All right, now we've got uh, that code plug written into the radio here. So everything's there, all my zones are in here. You can navigate through to change wherever you need to go. And uh, we'll get to playing with the radio.